Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of John M H D Z two one five eight. And today we're gonna to be looking at something pretty exciting. And obviously, it's not a Gundam, but it is a plastic mod. You can just see it right in front of y'all in the camera. But before doing that, go ahead and make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and video. It would be greatly appreciated if y'all do that. And I'll be posting more videos. <laughs> That's a little done deal right there. Anyways, guys, so let's get started. I got this beautiful thing. Yes, this is, no, well, both two beautiful things. <laughs> Kaling. And of course, the Nightmare Frame. Yes, guys, this isn't a mobile suit. This is a Nightmare Frame. This is from Kogias Lucia the Rebellion. This is going to be the Gurren Type 02. I freaking love Code Geass. I've always wanted to get some model kits. And finally, thank you, Hobby Town USA in San Antonio, for buying these. I greatly appreciate it. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and unbox this. So just take a look real quick at the box art, beautiful box art, seems like it's CGI, mostly, most likely CGI, yeah, probably CGI. And of course, like I said, you got the logo right here, Code Geass Lucia the Rebellion, Gurren Type 02 behind the uh, Nightmare Frame. Logo right here, a beautiful logo, next to a beautiful cutting right here, Bandai, or uh, Bandai 2008, made in Japan right there. Yep, beautiful arts. And it's pretty much it. Character design. This is on top of there. Sunrise Project. Uh, 2006 clamp. I'm not really sure what that means. But let's go on ahead. We can go ahead and look at the bottom right here. So we have some professional shots of the model. Looks like painted. Looks really, really nice, guys. I freaking love his arm right there. Comes with also a knife too. Looks like the little Gatling guns right there. We'll be going over all the accessories pretty much. And the features of mobile suit in the review though. But yeah, this thing looks great. It's definitely not a Gundam. So once again, I am excited. Mm -hmm. I really love the size of the cockpit in the back. I love the design of this mobile suit, guys. It's really awesome. And you do get an awesome figure right here. But I know it probably comes in white. So we have to do some serious painting on that. Alright. So, like I said, it's a little awkward where my camera is. I'm going to need some more room. I apologize about that once again. Got for $21.79. Pretty legitimate price right there for this kind of mobile suit. Or mobile suit. Uh, model kits. Nightmare frame. Yep, and some information on it, which is in Japanese, which I wish I could learn, but I cannot since I do not know Japanese. Very, very nice though. And uh, Kaleen Stad, Stadfield, something like that. I can't really remember how it's pronounced in Japan, but yeah. Anyways, you get some more pictures, and you get some pictures of the frame, the completed mobile suits. Nightmare frame, excuse me. <laughs> Plus the figure, which is really nice. And it looks like accessories, that's going to be a knife. This looks like it's going to be a... Uh, Think for the guys, it's been a while. The hook that it has, you also get it seems like an old seat stand, which is actually one of my favorites. I really do like these really simple stands. You also get stickers, and it looks like you get some wire for that little hook that you got right there. And let's see, it doesn't really show you who illustrates this, but it gives you some names right here. So, yeah, right there. And this one is retailed for 2000 yen, which, like I said, I pretty much got at a really good price. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and unbox this. Just give me one sec. All right, so I just took the parts out of the bags, of the plastic bags, so I've done the advance, so I don't have to basically waste y'all's time. But anyways, we're gonna first off with the instructions. Obviously right here, the front cover is a beautiful, beautiful little uh, title page, whatever the heck you wanna call it. It's very beautiful, very different from Gundam. Freaking love this design. And you get a new picture of the gear and type 02. Yeah, it's really nice looking. Also gives you uh, some stats right here. Roll is going to be attack, anti-panzer, anti-nightmare. High 4.51 meters. Uh, it's not a Gundam, so you got to be in mind that these are a little smaller than mobile suits that we are aware of. Basic weight is 5 point, I mean, excuse me, 7.5, 7.51 tons. Version details, Gurren Type 02. Weapons is going to be radiation, induction, hybrid, wave destruction system. So that's obviously going to be this awesome arm right here. This says, I'm not too sure how to pronounce that. Hein so Suga? Something like that. 43 millimeter grenade launcher. So I'm assuming that's going to be on the right arm right here. The little bazooka right here. As you can see. And let's see, Modo RO, Modo RO, I'm assuming. Type Otsu or OTSU, special stabber. So that's what that little knife is, which you can't see at the moment. But yeah, pilot, uh, obviously, Kaleen. And uh, pretty much, I forgot she had, she had like a fake name, I think. I'll remember. Once again, guys, it's been a while. Anyways, that's pretty much it. You could go ahead and pause that if you want to get a better look at that. But we're going to go on. Let's go look at the back first. 
So Gurren Type 02 once again, it obviously gives you some more pictures. Uh, as you can see, you get a color guide on top and at the bottom over here, which I'll show you in detail in a little bit. Let's see, you also did get an awesome picture of Colleen right there. More pictures pretty much, basically the same stats, all that stuff. And it gives you a little feature of all the accessories that it has right here. So obviously the arm, you have the nice wheels right here. You have that, I believe it's called like a Harkin or something like that. Really interesting, or maybe it's not, some kind of grapple hook, because that's what it just looks like pretty much. And also you do get the knife with the hand, and also the grenade launcher, and you also do get the cockpit right here. I'm assuming, if I remember, she's going to be design of the cutting, pretty much the design of all of the Lelouch's Rebellion's Nightmares, something like that. And here's the better version of the color guide right here as well. Really, really nice. So once again, if you want to look at that more in detail, go ahead, you are free to pause it. Okay, so next we're going inside more color pictures. So pick up, I'm assuming this is just like more information on the mobile suit. Keywords, I wonder what that's all about. Maybe more information on the anime. This really brings back nostalgia, I guess. This is so awesome. And it says right here, I'm assuming like this is like the evolution of the nightmare frames. Just really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. So if y'all can see that. And it's funny, like they show you the pictures of the ones that are model kits and the animated ones that are not model kits. For example, the Gurren and I forgot what this one was called in season two. But yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. So once again, you're free to pause that if you want. Next, well, this is gonna be pretty much the end. Let's go look at the inside. Okay. So for runners, we got a few. So we got tray A, B, C, you got two of D, E. And I'm not too sure what those things are right there. And you get the stand right there and you get some polycaps. So pretty much it looks like we're gonna use everything except a few polycaps and according to this, you're not gonna use one part of the stand connections. All right, so let's see what this build is all about, guys. Looking at step one right here, pretty much, man, this is very different. Yeah, these are very different instructions, guys. <laughs> and hey, it already tells you how to, you also do have, what's it called, a minifigure, Colleen, once again, in the cockpit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I opened up the trays in advance, so yeah, there is a lot of detail in that cockpit. Uh, you're probably gonna have to paint it. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit. Very interesting, like, can't really tell y'all anything because I haven't really experienced this build. This is very, very different from a Gundam. Yeah, but it's basically the basics of modeling, plastic modeling. Just get rid of nub marks, get rid of excess parts, uh, clean up sand, paint, all that stuff. Interesting feet design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. It looks like it's telling you how to make the arm already, which is gonna be very interesting. The claws, ah, it's gonna be a nice looking arm. The hand it gives you individual claws. Yeah, that looks really, really nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It looks like it's telling you how to pawn the arms, the original arm. I forgot this thing has one original arm, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like the knife is. Ah, is it one piece? Interesting. That's weird. Okay, yeah, putting it all together pretty much. And you get some wheels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Die armor. Yep, yep, yep. More wheels. Yep, yep, yep. Very interesting. Hmm. Heels that are articulated? Hmm. Interesting. I basically the same step over again. Mm -hmm. It looks like you have some mechanical detail as well, so you can think that. It looks like it's teaching you how to make the belt right there. And one thing I forgot to mention on step four right here is where they're making the grenade launcher. So very interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be a brief, a brief uh, explanation of how this thing is gonna be built pretty much. And I forgot to get a look at the color page right here. So putting it all together, pretty much like so. This thing's gonna be huge. Despite its scale one to 35, it's, this thing's gonna be huge pretty much. Very interesting. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and look at some trays. First off, we're starting with the multicolored one, which is going to be tray A, and it's very beautiful, guys. Here we go. So let me go ahead and put this on the side. So here is tray A right here. So multicolored, like I just said. You have some gray parts right here. There's a speck of red right there. It easily came off, thank God. <laughs> Yeah, so you get some mechanical parts right here. This is exactly like it's gonna be the inside of the cockpit. If you can see very closely, you can look at some mechanical detail right there. Buttons, basically how to pilot the nightmare frame. Really, really awesome. Can't wait to paint that stuff. Most likely gonna need reverse washing technique. Yeah, and once we get to the red parts right here, they're all gonna be gloss plus the orange. That looks like a dreamsicle. So, yeah, very nice gloss. 
Uh, it's rare that I get a kill with gloss finish. Man, it makes me not want to freaking um, top coat it. I really like where this is going. But look, here's a feature right here. The knife is gonna, knife and hand is gonna be one piece. So basically, just like the C design. Ugh, cringe. But yeah, that's a little unfortunate, but it, I really don't mind it. Man, is this sharp? That's not as sharp as I expected, but it looks sharp. That's really nice detail close to the Kotobukiya. Anyways, we're going up to the Dream Circle right here. Looks gonna be all the cockpits. Very, very nice detail. I'm really loving this. And here's gonna be some pics of creepy Kalin right here, as you can see. <laughs> it's pretty creepy looking, guys. But yeah, I guess your boat right there. Nice. <laughs> Anyways, so there is some detail in the back or in the front, whichever way. I'm gonna have to play this with a little for a little bit. Yeah, very nice. Oh, figure of Kalin. Yeah. Can't wait to paint this one. This one doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too big either. Yeah, very interesting. And the one when she's in the the nightmare frame is gonna be a little more trickier. But anyways, is that all the detail pretty much? Yep, that's pretty much gonna be it for this one. All right. So next tray, moving on to tray B, which is gonna be mostly some lighter red, kind of like coral if you want, magenta, pinkish, maybe not magenta. But yeah. So here's gonna be some parts for the legs and arm, pretty much. It's a really nice piece, guys. I really love this gloss finish. I'm a really big fan of it. Yeah, pretty much not really anything to see until it's panel lines and um, whichever you will. If you want to top coat this with flat coat, yeah, you can do that as well. But yeah, very interesting stuff, guys. And here's gonna be the inside of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's get another glimpse of that nice gloss finish. If we can see it with the lights. Yeah, guys, very, very awesome stuff. Okay, so moving on to Tracy, we got some more gray parts, more mechanical parts, pretty much. So it looks like you're gonna have, I'm not too sure what this is. This looks like a stand. Very interesting. This looks like it's gonna be the upper body of the Gurin, so that's gonna be very interesting. You do get some mechanical parts right here. Not really too sure what these are for, maybe for the ankles. Yeah, you do get some kind of ridges right there, if you can see closely. Mm hmm. Yep, that's gonna be pretty much it. And by all means, guys, if you want to pause to look at the tray, go ahead. You're free to do so as well. And let me give you a look at the back, pretty much. All right, moving on to tray D, and you get two of them. Gonna be more of the dark reddish ones, similar to tray A that you have. Let me go ahead and put one down. Show you this one. This one's gonna be mostly the legs, pretty much. And as you can see, I do have some scratches on some of the parts, which is very unfortunate. I'm going to have to sand that down. I hope it doesn't ruin the gloss finish. Either way, I could just gloss top coat this pretty much. You need to get some mechanical detail right here for the legs. Like I said, I think these are pretty much going to be for the legs. Mm -hmm. And here's going to be another, basically the same thing, pretty much. Just a little, no, they're basically the same thing, yeah. And once again, you got scratched just a little bit. But like I said, I'm hoping that uh, gloss coat will fix that. Yeah, so go ahead and pause if you're willing to. Okay. Back representation. All right. So sorry if it looks like the camera shifted. It did because I accidentally chipped it pretty much. But anyways, let's move on, guys. We're going to go over tray E, which is basically going to be all of the parts for the arm pretty much. Really nice detail. These claws look really, really nice as well. It's not that gloss finish. It's like metallic -y? metallic -ish? yeah they give you a metallic but it's not really looking that well in my opinion so probably gonna get some i've heard someone in like a long time ago one of the gunman pages the fan club pages in texas they used to come to have rustoleum chrome and it looks super super nice so i'm gonna go ahead and try that i don't know how much it costs i'm hoping it's like three dollars or something <laughs> but yeah very very nice detail right there mm-hmm mm -hmm. Okay, so next one is going to be interesting uh, rubber parts. These are going to be for the wheels and the belt. So the wheels are rubber. They're actual wheels. If you want to paint those, basically, is this the same material? Yeah, I guess it's the same material as uh, polycaps. But yeah, very interesting stuff, guys. Wheels are black. This belt is black. It's supposed to be gray. So I wonder how paint is going to handle rubber. I haven't tried it out yet. I hope, I hope it does well. But yeah, if you want to go ahead and pause that, once again, go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, and finally, just a few more trays. Here's gonna be the tray for the stand right here. You get the 
classic seed stem, which is gonna be in instead of black, I have some in black. This one's gonna be in gray, which is really really nice. You hardly get a gray stand like this. Yep, pretty much. All right, just simple. Not really too much to look at. And you do have some red polycaps. Very interesting. It's rare that we get some red polycaps for uh, Gundams. Yeah, very nice. Very very nice. And we pretty much once again you use all of them except for a few. So if you want to use these for a custom, by all means you can. Yep. And then finally, just a few more other things for the Harkin. If I'm not mistaken, if that's what it's called, you also do get some brass wire right here for the Harkin. It's a nice length. I don't want to bend it right now because I just want to leave that. So, and then finally, you do get a very, 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 very small, actually, one single sticker, sticker, sticker seat. Yeah, just gonna be this for the basically the visor for the Guren Type Zero Two. All right, guys. So that's gonna be pretty much it for this unboxing. Really looking forward to this model kit. Pretty much, I love once again Code Geass. And if y'all don't know, they're actually making season three. I think that's gonna come out. God, I'm not really too sure. I hope it's 2018. Nah, I just don't know. I gotta do my research on that. So yeah, Lizush is back pretty much. Also, if you haven't watched Akito the Rebellion, right? A Akito the Exile, excuse me. The Code Geass OVAs. By all means, go watch those as well. I know they released, uh, I think it's a complete collection pretty much. It's a really nice collectible box set, probably like 50, 60, 70 dollars. <laughs> Fortunately, but I mean, I think it's pretty much worth it. I plan to get it one day. But yeah, guys, this model kit seems very promising. Like I said, I love the gloss finish. I love how it does. Basically, it has its value. You get a nice free stand, which is one of the stands that I favor, the C type. And, um,. You get a nice pair of accessories, especially this arm, which I can't wait to paint and build pretty much. Yeah, guys, so my first Code Geass kit. And I know a lot of people, I know there's a bunch of old reviews on these. I'm really hoping to basically remaster the reviews for these two. I also have uh, God, Lancelot, but the very first one. Not the Air Cavalry one or the one at the... What was it called? Reconquista or something like that? I just have the original one pretty much with his swords and... Uh, Varus rifle. I'm not too if I'm not mistaken. That's what it's called. So yeah, guys. But basically, if you have any questions, just go ahead and comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. It's gonna be somewhere in the middle right here. If you can see my finger, there it is right there. And don't forget to check out my other videos wherever they might be on this screen, pretty much. All right, guys. And also, don't forget to follow my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest updates on videos, projects, and product hauls, guys. And I know I've been out for a while. I've been very busy. Uh, one thing I do have to mention though, guys, I don't have an airbrush. So it takes me a while to paint and build because I don't have an airbrush. I hand paint with enamels. I know enamels, it takes pretty much 24 hours for paints to dry. But I like them because I wanna say I'm just, they're easier to work with. Acrylics to me, they dry off very easily. They leave a bunch of brush strokes pretty much and nasty ones at that. I mean, I tried to thin them out. I used Tamiya. Maybe I had to use a different one. Maybe Tamiya's not for me. Oh, by the way, if anything, I like I mentioned before, I do the enamel plus clear coat afterwards. So I just use that pretty much. But yeah, no, I mean, Tamiya's are all right. I just prefer enamels pretty much. Maybe I'll have a ginger heart one day and I'll switch to acrylics pretty much. But until then, yeah, I'm sticking with hand painting enamels pretty much. All right, guys, I'm done rambling. I'll see you out in the next video. Take care.